Well, stocks are back in bull market territory, and that has many rushing to check their 401k balances. But our next guest say that's the wrong move. Joining us now, Sarah Newcomb, founder of Thrive Financial Empowerment Center, and David Blanchett, PGM head of retirement research. So let's get right into this. What is wrong with that? We'll start with you, Sarah, and then you, David. Yeah, I mean, when when markets are down, we say don't check your balances. When they're up, we're saying don't check their balances. You'd think we'd say don't ever look at it. And it's not that checking your balances is bad. It's that frequent checking your balance can lead, it puts you at risk of making emotional decisions. Because the more frequently you check, the more you're going to feel every up and down of the market. And that just puts you on an emotional roller coaster ride, which we know doesn't end well for most investors. Yeah, so don't necessarily move with your emotions here. Look at the timeline. Um, David, you know, my question is, if you don't make a knee-jerk reaction, could it be potentially a time to maybe shift up that portfolio a little? So it might be. I think that, you know, Sarah's point's really valid, where, you know, you, you can't control what the market does, right? So focus on things that you can't control, how much you're saving for retirement. And, you know, right now, is a different unique environment where the markets are up quite a bit. We have a very attractive return on fixed income or cash. And so, you know, while I normally wouldn't suggest that you regularly check your balance, I think right now, you know, to the extent that maybe you're on track to retire successfully, it could actually make sense to make a move. Now, again, I think, you know, take a deep breath, don't make big changes, but if you're on track to accomplish your goal, your retirement goal, maybe take some risk off the table might not be a bad idea. Sarah, I got to ask you, okay, so to your point earlier about don't check bad, don't check when it's good. So I am one of those people who has been guilty of when things are great, because I used to check when it was bad. I stopped doing that. Um, I do like to check, you know, what, when should I be checking my balance then? Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I like to check too, but I I check periodically uh, when I know I've made a contribution because it, in that way I'm I'm reinforcing the savings habit. I'm I'm rewarding myself by watching my balances go up. I think the risk that you run by checking during a bull market is that then you anchor your expectations on peak estimates of the values of your assets and it makes more normal times actually feel like losses because then if you're if you're checking during a peak and then things fall a little bit rather than it feeling like well things are back to normal you will feel as if you've lost money so that i think is the biggest emotional risk of checking during really uh, peak performance days is that anchoring on that peak amount. But it's great to reward yourself for saving. I would say there's no realistic need to check more than a few times a year, quarterly maybe at most. If you are in a long-term uh, investment position, there's no, re no reason to be checking every few weeks. Yeah, Sarah, that's a good point about uh, sort of anchoring expectations here. A lot of people thinking that with the tech names, especially that had such hyper growth uh, during the pandemic. You know, David, you pointed to, to potentially, and of course this all depends on your timeline, taking risk off the table right now. What does that strategy look like? Well, again, like normally I don't like the idea of market timing. I'm not, I'm not actively suggesting that, but I think that we're in a really unique environment today where you can earn 5% for doing nothing, having your money in cash. And so, you know, if you're one of those people who are kind of hyper obsessed about retirement, you're checking, you know, often you're kind of feeling the, the, the pangs of that up and down, you know, taking money off the table, normally there's a, there's a big cost there, right? You know, normally cash is returning nothing or one or 2%. Well, you know, if, if you feel like you've reached a comfortable spot, right, things could always change. If you're invested in the markets, markets go down, we saw that in 2022. I, I think it, it is worth asking yourself today, hey, like, have I have I gotten far enough? Am I, am I close enough to my goal where moving some money into, into like cash or high yielding bonds could actually make sense. So again, I'm not suggesting market timing, but I am suggesting think about your situation and what's attractive right now. David, I got to ask you though. So you're not suggesting uh, market timing, but a follow up to that would be then how do uh, we stop people from getting off the roller coaster in the middle of the ride? Yeah. So again, like like I, I'm I'm suggesting like this timing decisions based upon your overall financial situation. It's not like where markets are going to go. I think that that we've done a lot of that already in terms of like 401k plans with things like target date funds. I think that 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 you you need to understand that that so much of what happens in the market is is noise versus signal. Like markets go up, markets go down. I think that the the key is delegating your account to a professional manager. And then as Sarah said, check in once a month. I mean, no, not once a month. 
once a quarter and, and leave it alone. Like the best thing you can do for your retirement is to stay the course and invest regularly. Uh, Sarah, really quickly, in, in times like this, what's the biggest question that you're getting right now? Well, I think I, I, I really love what David is talking about in terms of um, the checking against your goals, because regardless of the market performance, what whatever the question is, the underlying question is, am I going to be OK? Do I have enough? Will I have enough? And if you've done the work with a professional to make a plan so that you know where you would uh, need to be right now in order to be on track for retirement, then you can check your balance against that benchmark. And you're not benchmarking against what the S&P 500 did. I think you always have to ask your question, ask yourself the question when you're looking at your balance, what are you comparing it to? Yesterday, last week, where you need to be? And so if you're looking at where you need to be right now and you're far above that, then yes, you're ahead of your goals and now may be a good time to lower your risk and take advantage of some of those gains. Um, and yet, if you, I think what we, what it always comes back to is that if it's frequent checking, then the need that you might be meeting may be more of a need for control, in which case checking on market behavior is not going to meet that need. Focus on the things you can control, like your cash accounts. Sarah, uh, you haven't fully convinced me yet. I'm still in the guilty <laughs> camp of probably checking too much. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's when you grow up a certain way and things change, it's it's hard to go against the psychology of, you know, kind of this the emotion. I mean, we see this in trading activity, the FOMO trades and things like that. We're going to have to put a pin in our conversation for now. Maybe we'll do a sidelines conversation where you all can convince me. I'm sure there are others that need more convincing, but we appreciate you, your insight. Great advice, Sarah Newcomb and David Blanchett. We appreciate you all today.